Welcome to this presentation of a temporal analysis of Etude au Chemin de Fer by Pierre Schaeffer. As the first work of music concrète, a type of music or sound art constructed of real-life sounds which are then abstracted into an artistic expression, this work has great historical significance. On a musical level, it is also one of the finest examples of temporal form and balance. These factors make this work an enduring and relevant part of our musical tradition. There are many writings on the historical aspect of this work, and this presentation will discuss the temporal aspects. The method of analysis used is discussed in great detail in another presentation on this site called An Introduction to the Analysis of Temporal Elements in Music. This method of analysis is derived from basic, fundamental cognitive principles of how the mind universally reacts to sonic events. Since this system is not dependent on meter or notation, it is one of the first systems that is able to analyze and explain temporal features of works such as this. As a brief recap, there are five basic temporal elements. Sustained, aligned repeating, non-aligned repeating, aligned non-repeating, and non-aligned, non-repeating. Elements in the upper left are more stable than elements in the lower right portion of this chart. The following terminology is used in this system. An event is a single sound, silence, or series of sounds occurring within the psychological present, which is approximately one and a half to three seconds, depending on the complexity of the context. Elements are events or a series of events extending beyond this psychological present. Sustained elements are comprised of single sounds or textures extending beyond the psychological present. Repeating elements are multiple sonic events similar enough to allow the mind to recognize and group into a consistent identity. These may be exact or identical, which are the strongest form, but may also include weaker forms of repetition such as highly similar events and long repeated events which are comprised of material longer than the psychological present yet within the active focus time of three to nine seconds that then repeats. Aligned elements are defined as multiple events coordinated to a common reoccurring interval of time. We have Schaefer's sketches, which show his application of serial techniques, such as retrograde, inversion, and symmetrical construction methods. These are very insightful into the techniques he used to create this work, but do little to explain the overall artistic flow and structure of the work. This was done intuitively. As a classically trained musician, Schaefer's intuition in this pioneering work was highly influenced by the common practice forms and principles. As we examine the temporal analysis of this work, this training and influence is clearly visible, whether consciously or subconsciously applied. The factor of repetition is also paramount in this work, as also evidenced by Schaefer's own comment, repeat the sound fragment, it is not the same, it has become music. And this indeed he does to create and develop this work. An overview of this work shows a temporal structure that is surprisingly traditional, with an introduction, two-part exposition of new techniques and materials, development of these materials and techniques, and a closing coda section. Since he was using a monophonic cylindrical locked loop recording device to create this work, only sequential juxtaposed use of elements is found in this work. Let us now look at each of these sections in greater detail. The introduction to the work opens with a traditional aligned, non-repeating train whistle musical gesture. He then begins a naturally occurring hybrid element, an aligned repeating sustained hybrid consisting of a real-life similar repetitions of a train starting to move. These repetitions foreshadow the locked loop repeats that, although we take for granted as most ordinary today, were at the time of this composition quite revolutionary. The introduction then closes with a free, non-aligned, non-repeating series of train sounds, clearing the palette for the exposition. Like many classical exposition sections, he opens with the more stable primary material, 
in this case the locked loop recordings, which form a type of metered music. This is followed by a non-aligned, non-repeating whistle signal that serves as a contrasting, separating gesture. The B section of the exposition uses real-life, highly similar repetitions and non-repeating elements that, after the exact repetitions of the A section, invite the listener to find patterns and repetitions in everyday life. The less stable nature of these elements is also very characteristic of a typical B section in classical form. It closes with a dropping pitch sustained element hybrid and a short whistle event that forms a cadence. The development section almost entirely uses weaker, less stable, and less clear forms of repeating and non-repeating elements, fragmenting and blurring their nature as would a traditional composer with musical motifs and themes. As this moves forward, he starts to use more and more aligned elements to help bring the section back together. As with the previous section, a series of three whistle-pitched sounds with natural decay forms a cadence. The coda uses the reverse temporal structure of the introduction, reflecting Schaefer's preference for symmetrical structures. Here, the section begins with an aligned, repeating, sustained hybrid element consisting of pulsed real-world whistle sounds. Then, as a closing cadential gesture, a musical, aligned, non-repeating whistle gesture concludes the short but satisfying work. So. Here is the three-minute work in its entirety along with the analysis. I hope that you found this analysis of Etude au Chemin de Fer interesting and useful. 
Comments, questions, or applications of this system are welcome, and more information may be found at my website at www.robertfrankmusic.com. Thank you.